Welcome back to Parenting You. I'm Stephanie, and we're here to help you navigate this amazing journey we call parenting. And we're so glad you're here. Today's episode is for expecting moms and dads at the beginning of their parenting journey. And I'm excited to chat with Carmen Alexis Miller, an outpatient dietitian at Our Lady of Lourdes Women's and Children's Hospital in Lafayette. She's in the know about all the things relating to nutrition, and eating well, including gestational diabetes. And I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for being on this podcast and sharing your ex- expertise. I want you to start by telling us a little bit about yourself and your job at Women's and Children's. Yes, thank you. Um, to start off, I graduated with my bachelor's degree at UL, go Cajuns. <laughs> um, but I ventured here to this side of the uh, the river for my master's degree at Fran U. Oh, okay. And my dietetic internship. Um, this hospital was just being built as I was graduating, so I didn't get a chance to make it here, but it's... I'm glad I'm here today. It's wonderful. Um, right at right after my master's degree, I started working at Our Lady of Lourdes in a uh, in the hospital in a clinical s- setting. And then Lourdes Physician Group was hiring an outpatient dietitian, and I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Was kind of unsure about it at first, but I stepped in guns blazing, and I said, "I'm going to make this mine." And um, as the outpatient dietitian there, I take on all patients from all ages and disease states. Mm, okay. So um, I have special interest areas, gestational diabetes being one of them. Mm-hmm. But as of now, or at least for now, um, I cover everyone in all nutrition states. Um, so that that is what I'm doing right now, and I've found a very comfortable niche yeah. there. Um, cozy little office and a nice setting where um, I feel very lucky and happy to help. That's awesome. That's great. Thank well, you. you mentioned gestational diabetes, and so that's kind of what we want to jump into today. Of course. Um, I remember the test when I was pregnant. Oh, the test. <laughs> <laughs> um, so all pregnant moms are screened for gestational diabetes. Yes. Um, can you walk us through why, what is that process, and what does that tell us about the pregnancy? Okay. Um, yes, so pregnancy can bring about changes to your insulin resi- or insulin sensitivity okay. and therefore your uh, your blood sugar as well. I don't know if there's a, a very specific reason why, but we just know that changes do happen. Yeah. The body just, you know, lots of changes during pregnancy. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the body has to adjust. So doctors will test for, just to make sure that your blood sugar is maintaining good balance throughout mm-hmm. your pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Usually they test around 26 to 28 weeks. However, if you do have a history of maybe pre-diabetes or if in a previous pregnancy you mm-hmm. had gestational diabetes, they might test you a lot sooner mm-hmm. just because you tend to be more at risk. But for, for normal purposes, you'll be test, or pregnant women are tested between 26 to 28 weeks with a glucose test. <laughs> yep. um, Different countries and different areas will do different things, but here in the U.S., we have a two-step process. The first step is the screening process. Well, you'll be given the wonderful little drink, the Which little really, sugar drink. <laughs> uh, let me say this. Only just tasted like a flat Fanta. I That's agree. all I tell people is it tasted like a flat orange Fanta. I like, agree. Don't be scared. <laughs> uh, that's some of the – I've I've had women had, like – pure anxiety over the drink and I'm like do you remember those awful little uh drinks we had when we were younger in the 90s um it's just something like that so just you know take it with a grain of salt and you you can enjoy it just enjoy but the screening test is done with 50 grams of of glucose okay and they test you one hour after that to kind of see where your what your blood sugar is doing with all that sugar that you just took in if um if you get a reading, if your blood sugar is a little bit elevated, they'll do a second test. That test has 100 grams of glucose. Got it. So it's a lot um, more syrupy. It's a lot more sugar. But then after after you drink that, they'll test your blood sugar at one hour, two hours, and three hours. Okay. So if um, – and for – an official diagnosis of gestational diabetes, you have to fail two of those. Okay. I remember I've, 
uh, I was here at Friend U doing my master's program, uh, pregnant with my first child, and I was there getting my, my blood sugar tested, and I failed the one hour. Yeah. And all I could think of was, oh my gosh, I'm in school to be a dietitian, and I'm going to have diabetes. This is the <laughs> worst. I cannot believe this. But then I, I passed the, the second part of the test, which I'm thankful that they do a two-step process. But then that means you know what people are going through. Yes. So you can talk to your patients about, I get what this is about. And it's not just about the, sh- yeah, it's not yeah. just about the drink um, yeah. you hear the word diabetes and, yeah. set, and it makes you kind of um, yeah. nervous yeah but um but that's the process um for those women who who maybe have a history of diabetes maybe strong in their family maybe they've had like i've said before had a previous pregnancy with gestational diabetes mm-hmm. or if um or just for Um, testing purposes, you can get your hemoglobin A1C drawn at the beginning of your pregnancy. Okay. A hemoglobin A1C is a a blood test that shows about a three-month average of your blood sugar. Uh, You can't test for that later in your pregnancy because your blood is doing different things. Sure. And so you might not get an accurate uh, result. But if you test your A1C in the beginning of your pregnancy, well, that'll show your doctor what the past three months have looked like. Okay. Um... An elevated A1C in the beginning of your pregnancy can, what was the number, 98.4% um, predict mm-hmm. that you will have gestational diabetes. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So for those of us, like myself, maybe with a strong history of diabetes in my family, mm-hmm. um, next time, or hopefully next time, uh, if a second baby happens, I will ask for my A1C drawn at the beginning. So that way I know. And then that way you can kind of treat it at the beginning of your pregnancy and not have to wait till 26, 28 weeks along to then decide, okay, let's get some things uh, rolling for the last like 10 or so weeks of this pregnancy. Well, that's interesting. What a great way to kind of think about your whole pregnancy as a journey and and from the very beginning be in tune to what's going on. I love that. Yes. Well, so let's say that someone quote unquote fails both tests, but maybe just the results weren't what they were hoping for. Um, What does that mean for mom's pregnancy, labor, the baby? What should moms to be be thinking about if they get a diagnosis? Okay, so if you get a diagnosis of gestational diabetes, likely the first step will, they will just send you home with monitoring tools. Okay. Um, the, The finger prick and the testing strips and whatnot. They'll have you monitor your blood sugar, usually fasting in the morning and then two or three times during the day after meals to kind of see what's going on. Um, if that, if those numbers look kind of crazy, they might start you on medication. Okay. Um, but let's say you've got an official diagnosis of gestational diabetes and you're just going home with this monitoring supplies and you're like, okay, what do, you know, what implications does this mean for me and my baby? There's already so many concerns during pregnancy. Let's add this on top. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, so, but it is serious. It is something mm-hmm. to to take seriously and and to work with your your doctors and whatnot um, to keep things stable. Mm-hmm. Untreated gest- gestational diabetes can put you as the mom at a very high risk for hypertension during pregnancy or high blood pressure mm-hmm. and even preeclampsia, mm-hmm. which is a, a condition of severe high blood pressure and other implications mm-hmm. and could and can lead to awful. Um, awful results. Um, Gestational diabetes puts you at risk for having a C-section. It also puts you at higher risk for developing type 2 diabetes later on in life. Mm -hmm. This could put baby at risk for being um, born large, Mm -hmm. um, which then increases the risk for a C-section. If, mm-hmm. a, ba- if a baby is, is too big, they doctors will likely do a C-section. It could mean that they're born a little bit early, mm-hmm. um, could spend some time in the NICU, yeah. which is, which is um, although we have wonderful NICU staff, a mm-hmm. mom never really wants her baby to sure. go in the NICU. Mm-hmm. Um, if a baby is born preterm, that baby could be um, could have respiratory distress mm-hmm. syndrome if it's born a little bit too early. Um, that baby is also at risk for developing diabetes themselves and being mm. overweight later on in life. Interesting. The worst possible case scenario would be blood sugars left untreated throughout the pregnancy, and we have a we have a, a stillbirth mm-hmm. as a result. Yeah. So, 
it's it's gestational diabetes is not a death sentence but it's also not something you should just go home and yeah. ignore yeah it's crucial to watch it get tested for it and take it serious and take it seriously yes yeah well so tell me about um the healthiest ways to manage gestational diabetes is it through diet is it through medicine what are some ways that women can be prepared for that and if they're facing it what do they do at home to make sure it's okay okay so your your OBGYN will be your best resource mm-hmm. um but of course I'll 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 say diet first as uh, <laughs> the best way to manage your gestational diabetes but be, but before I get into that the best one of the best ways to, to manage it is to monitor it. Yeah. I know those finger pricks get annoying. Um, and it's, uh, it's, you know, you kind of have to put a reminder on your phone yeah. every so often to check your blood sugar, but at least you know where you stand. Yeah. And if you start, and if you do make changes, well then you know what's working and what's mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. People's, our blood sugar will respond differently. Yeah. Yours might respond differently to different foods than mine will. Mm-hmm. I know oatmeal tends to be one of those foods that it's kind of up in the air. You might be able to eat some oatmeal and your blood sugar will be fine. I might eat it and I'm skyrocketing for a few hours. Knowing Mm. that, knowing that your blood sugar could respond differently to different things, it's always good to monitor first. Secondly, you can exercise. Um, Exercise is great during pregnancy for a multitude of reasons, Mm -hmm. but also for your blood sugar. The movement that you do through exercise actually uses that sugar that's in your blood and sends it where it needs to go that activity that you're doing. And when you say exercise, you don't mean like an hour of really tough cardio. It's if you a brisk want to walk, and your it's doctor... lifting weights. It's what makes your blood pump. It's what makes your heart pump. Exactly. You don't have to think of it as being so extreme. You don't have to go to the gym for two hours. Got it. Sometimes, um, even if you are monitoring your blood sugar and you're like, okay, wow, that meal, I thought it was a great planned perfectly planned meal, but my blood sugar is going nuts. Sometimes a little 10 minute walk after a heavy meal can just kind of help bring things back down oh, a little. Like so yeah, it doesn't have mm-hmm. to be strenuous, um, you know, leaving you uh, exhausted after mm-hmm. an exercise. Sometimes a 10 minute walk can do the trick too. Great, okay. Um, not only monitoring your blood sugar, exercising, but the monitoring your, your weight too you are going to gain weight during pregnancy, but, but having blood sugars that are out of control can kind of put you at risk for gaining a little bit too quickly or gaining maybe more than what is, is normal. So something to monitor. Um, and then lastly, of course, you can focus on your diet, mm-hmm. which we've had, we've had such success um, as dietitians helping moms with gestational diabetes that a lot of times they don't need medication first. Yeah. If they do need medication, sometimes they can be on um, a more simple medication. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, look, sometimes life happens and you have to be on insulin injections. But that's second, third step. And there's, and, and, but I feel comfortable knowing that even if things get out of control, there's still help um, with medication. But a lot of times you can be controlled through your diet. That'll mean keeping an eye on the foods that do affect your blood sugar, those carbohydrate foods. Mm -hmm. That will be your grains, such as your bread, rice, uh, pasta, Mm -hmm. your starchy vegetables, such as your potatoes and corn and winter squash, and your your fruit, your milk, things like that. The one thing I do ask patients to take off the table completely would be soda. That's Mm. the one. I'm a pretty relaxed dietitian, especially around uh, processed foods and sure. sugary, f- sure. There's a time and place for all foods, uh-huh. but when it comes to soda and gestational diabetes, mm-hmm. that's asking for a skyrocketing blood sugar yeah. without getting much nutritional value. Yeah. So I always tell my patients, look, we don't have to take much off the table. We have to monitor our portions. We have to work and know what foods affect our blood sugar. But the one thing I would mention would be to maybe, yeah. maybe take the, maybe put the sodas away for after pregnancy. That makes sense. Or whatnot. That makes sense. Um, there are focus foods that I like to tell patients to, uh, pregnant patients to, to try to get more of during pregnancy. Um, and when you focus on those focus foods, um, you don't really have a lot more room you're full, you're satisfied, and you, there's not a lot more room to um, 
for anything extra that might not be great for you and baby. Mm -hmm. So you're starting with the things that fill you and keep you full rather than the things that don't do much for you. And so it leaves little room for the cravings of the I think uh, other stuff stuff called that empty calories. Yeah. Okay. I love that. With with, um, pregnancy and building a small human, there's lots of nutrients that are increased. Mm -hmm. You need more protein, you need more vitamins, things like that. So I, I encourage women to, to, to think with these foods first, Mm -hmm. and then you have a small space left for the foods that actually do affect your blood sugar. And then it's not, it's not such a, a thinking game for every meal, every snack, every point of the day. Yeah. Well, I think those are really helpful tips. I know that it can feel so just overwhelming. Like, what do I do? I've never where do I start? Anything like this? Where do I start? So I think those are super helpful. Well, what else do we need to know about gestational diabetes? Um, Anything that's important for moms to help manage, or just to kind of demystify what this is all about? I mentioned this before, but I think it's worth mentioning again. This is not a death sentence, Mm -hmm. but it is something worth Mm -hmm. taking seriously. It takes time to plan. It it takes time to test and monitor and um, maybe pack a lunch or two or a Mm -hmm. snack or three in your purse or with you to work or on days where you're not in your normal schedule. Some of that takes some planning and some time, but welcome to to motherhood because (laughs) (laughs) what good practice (laughs) yeah it's great practice for having a baby it takes lots of lots of planning and thinking ahead Mm -hmm. um but it's not a death sentence and a lot of times it can be managed with diet and exercise um a lot of times if we start off on medication sometimes your diet and exercise can help you get off of medication Mm. and and because gestational diabetes puts you at risk for type 2 later on in life um altering making small changes to your lifestyle now will help set you up for yeah. for later on for you and baby and yeah. other other family members too this this helps you set up a good lifestyle mm-hmm. to move forward with and not have to constantly be maybe looking over your shoulder for that diabetes to come mm-hmm. crawling in it builds good habits yes so if we're faced with a diagnosis of gestational diabetes, do we talk with our OB? Um, how do we get connected to someone like you who could really help walk us through this process? Yes, so since it will be your OBGYN who likely ran the test to test you for gestational, yeah. they will be on your in your corner on your team helping you monitor that. Um, in La- at least in Lafayette, I know that um, the OBGYNs have my information. If they ever need, they can send a referral for you mm-hmm. to my office. Hi, this is so-and-so. She has a diagnosis of gestational diabetes. Mm-hmm. This is her first time having this. Um, please put her in your office for an hour-long consultation Got and it. help her get through this. And then that's where I come in. And it's um, Sometimes my schedule or other dietitians, our schedules b- will be a little backed up, but sometimes we sneak in our gestational diabetes patients a little bit earlier since, you know, it's kind of a time sensitive. You're on the clock a little bit. You're on bit. the clock a little bit. So sometimes we'll, we, we, have, uh, we have wiggle room to scoot our, those types of patients in sure. a little bit sooner. I spend an hour at, in the beginning with my mm-hmm. patients. We go over what your normal habits already are, what um, some recommendations from me, I kind of like to work with you. You know, Mm -hmm. if you tell me, look, I love pasta, I love bread, I love rice, and I don't love vegetables. So how am I supposed to work with this diagnosis of gestational diabetes? That's where I come in. That's where I can help. I don't like to just spurt recommendations Mm -hmm. at uh, at my patients. So I like to work with you. Foods that you like, foods that maybe you're having an aversion to during this Mm -hmm. pregnancy. That's true. Maybe some things things just don't sit well. (laughs) Don't sit well and we can work around that. Mm -hmm. So my my first appointments usually last about an hour, um, but I like to get everything down. And then I send you home with the packet of information pretty much detailing everything that we've talked about mm-hmm. and then a few extra I have I send you home with snack ideas for blood mm-hmm. sugar management meal planning ideas mm-hmm. those sorts of things um I, I talk fast and I talk a lot so I like to send my patients home with <laughs> with information they can go back to if, yeah. if they would ever need but I think it helps them not feel alone which I think sometimes in pregnancy you can feel alone and when you have a partner like you and your OBGYN you have a team with you so yes. you don't feel so alone Yes, I've had patients tell me that 
they pretty much knew what they had to do, but it felt good to have a professional say it back to them. Yeah. Um, Not only that, I've had patients say, wow, you have cleared up so much information for me. Mm. I was so scared. I was so nervous. I felt like I couldn't look at a piece of bread. Mm -hmm. But after talking to you, I know I don't have to take most foods off the table. I just have to watch my portions and what I'm pairing them with. That's awesome. Well, I'd love to hear some of the good focus foods you mentioned. Let's talk about those. I'm sure we can include those in the show notes so that everyone is knows what to put on their menu plan but tell me what some of those are okay take me with a grain of salt (laughs) i say that i i am pulling a lot from from my little from my little pregnancy bible that i have here this is real food for pregnancy this is another dietitian her name is lily nichols she's a certified diabetes educator okay um as you can see, I've I use this. It's I very use loved. This book. It's very <laughs> loved and it's very useful. So um, because I'm taking so much uh, from this book, I felt the need to to credit her. Sure. But the focus foods for pregnancy, like I mentioned um, just previously, will be our protein foods, our healthy fats, our fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Okay. But there are some other foods that are because of their vitamin content Mm -hmm. or exceptional foods to include during pregnancy. So eggs. Eggs would be a wonderful thing if you enjoy that and if it agrees with your body. The vitamins that you get Mm -hmm. from particularly the yolk. Mm -hmm. The yolk will have the healthy fats. The yolk will have the choline, which is a vitamin that's essential during pregnancy for baby's brain development. The yolk will have all that and more. So eggs would be a wonderful food to include during your pregnancy. Okay. Another food would be liver. (laughs) That's why I said- I was wondering where you were going with this. Take me with a grain of salt because liver. It takes me back. My mom would make liver and onions and she loved it. I can smell it (laughs) right now thinking about it. Um, I think it was Lily who said in her book, if we consumed enough liver during our pregnancy we almost wouldn't need our prenatal vitamin wow the liver is a powerhouse for vitamins and it's a powerhouse for vitamins in a concentrated form Mm -hmm. so to get the same amount of vitamins that you get from a small portion of liver we'd have to eat awful quantities of other foods so um i know it's a strange thing to to cook not a lot of people like the flavor there are different ways that you can cook it and prepare it um, Mm -hmm. that make it a little bit more appetizing but if it's just something that you cannot do um, you can get liver in a desiccated form such as a supplement so it is something something to think about Um, moving on slow cooked meat and bone broth Mm -hmm. so meat that was um, slow cooked on the bone so um whether you did that in a crock pot or whether you Cajun style just watched your pot for four or five hours, Love it. that kind of thing, mm-hmm. pulled pork, things like that. Those would be great um, for the vitamin content. And then the minerals that are in the bone, when you slow cook them, those leach out into the meat. And okay. so you get a few extra nutrients from your yeah. bones. Um, bone broth too would be mm-hmm. a wonderful thing to include during your pregnancy, especially on days maybe maybe in the beginning where not a lot is agreeing with you. Mm-hmm. You're dealing with some nausea. Uh, your bone broth can be a, a warm electrolyte kind of drink. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yes. So some a few others would be your leafy green vegetables. Okay. Need I say more? <laughs> <laughs> of course, we all know about those and how wonderful those are for our bodies. Uh, many, many vitamins, especially mm-hmm. those that are important during pregnancy. So your kales, your collard greens, your lettuces, spinach, spinaches. All your, Got yes. It. Um not to exclude any of the other colorful vegetables, yep. but your leafy greens will are, are, are wonderful sources of vitamins. Along, or moving on, salmon, mm-hmm. fatty, other fatty fish like tuna, sardines, mm-hmm. and your seafood. Those will have wonderful vitamins and nutrients um, for baby, especially like a good source of vitamin D mm-hmm. um, and concentrations of healthy fats. The, the, the fats that are in fatty fish like salmon and tuna, those will be primarily your omega-3 fatty acids. Yeah. Those are heart healthy. Those are anti-inflammatory. But those help build a healthy brain for baby as well. And then last but not least, again with a grain of salt, would be your full fat dairy. So mm. whole milk and whole fat cheese and whole milk yogurt, things like that. Mm-hmm. Nothing to go crazy with, 
but the the extra fat that you get from these um, these products helps with um, not number one helps you helps keep you full, but also helps keep baby um, growing properly too. We can afford a little bit of extra fat, mm-hmm. and with whole full fat dairy products, you you're able to find more natural sources, um, which tend to always, of course, be better for yeah. for. Um, for health in general, but especially for a, a growing small baby. Well, I know what's on my menu now, and I am not pregnant, nor do I have gestational diabetes, <laughs> but that sounds delicious. That's yes. such a good list. Thank you for sharing that. No problem. Well, thank you again for being here, Carmen. I learned so much. We appreciate everything you've done, and everything she talked about today will be in the show notes, and we really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We are with you through all of Maternity Beyond, and thank you for joining us on this amazing journey we call parenting. We'll see you next time.